Now I want to give two different proofs of the fact that the alternating group AN is the only subgroup of SN, of the symmetric group, of index 2. There are no other uh, index 2 subgroups. So, um, yeah, here is uh, the statement of, uh, that we want to prove. And, of course, it is worth uh, recalling that um, clearly AN inside SN as indeed index 2, uh, since we recall just by definition AN uh, is uh, the group of even permutation. Even permutations, which means permutation which has which are uh, which can be written as a product as an even uh, as a product of an even number of uh, transpositions or inversions. And so, of course, one of the cosets is AN itself, and then the other coset, the other, the only other possible coset is the one of odd permutations. So all the transpositions and all the product uh, of uh, odd number of uh, transpositions. So, okay, AN is index 2, uh, and as I said, I want to give uh, two proofs of the fact that there are no other subgroups of index uh, 2. So, I want to give this in two ways, to show this in two ways. Uh, number one, so in the first, for the first way, I want to uh, use the this uh, this fact that um, say there are so the only homomorphism of groups. from Sn, from Sn to the group, uh, the cyclic group of two elements in multiplicative notation, so let's write it as C2, so the group consisting of 1 minus 1. So the only, well, apart from the trivial of homomorphism, so if you want the only surjective, the only surjective homomorphism from Sn to C2 is the one given by the sine function. So is uh, is the one given by the homomorphism that assigns to a permutation sigma its parity. So, in other words, precisely the parity of the number of transpositions needed to write uh, sigma as a, as a product of transpositions. Uh, so, this is clearly a homomorphism, and there are no other surjective homomorphisms. So, why would this be enough to, uh, to show what we want? Well, we observe... that if we take a subgroup of index 2, say if H is another subgroup of index 2 of Sn, uh, then we know that all subgroups of index 2 are normal, So H is normal, and therefore it makes sense to consider the quotient. And of course, the quotient consists of the coset of H, which must be 2, and so this is isomorphic as a group to C2. And so another way to say this is that there exists a surjective morphism of groups from Sn to C2, of which, uh, for which H is the kernel.
So clearly, if we show that uh, any, uh, of course here, phi is surjective, if we show that any surjective, so that the, there is only one surjective uh, uh, homomorphism of this, uh, of this form, then there is also only one H, namely uh, the kernel of the sine function, which is of course a n. Now, in, uh, for the second way, I want to use some additional fact, which is uh, the nice and interesting fact that a n is generated by three cycles. So of course this is, makes sense only for n at least three, but also uh, our statement that well it's kind of trivial for n equals two. So uh, well let's proceed with uh, the first way. So here we suppose that phi is some surjective morphism from S n to C two. Now, first observe that uh, phi, so that um, if we apply phi to any transposition, uh, the value has to be the same. In other words, phi of tau 1 is equal to phi of tau 2 for any, for any two transpositions. And the reason is uh, the fact that all transpositions are conjugated, right? In other words, tau one will be always, uh, it will be always be possible to write tau one as sigma tau two, sigma minus one for some sigma in Sn, and therefore by the fact that phi is a homomorphism, we see that phi of tau one has to be equal to phi of the right hand side here, which is obviously equal to phi of tau 2. So, okay, all transpositions have the same image under tau, and of course, we uh, also deduce that phi of any transposition has to be minus 1, since uh, otherwise. The, the morphism will not be um, surjective. Right, since any uh, permutation in Sn can be written as a product of uh, transpositions, then if all transpositions have phi equal to 1, this, this uh, phi will uh, not be surjective into C2, and therefore phi of tau is minus 1. Well, this precisely shows, we conclude that, tau, that phi is just the sign. Morphism. Precisely because there is no, there are no other choices uh, to do since the value of phi on any other permutation will be determined by how phi acts on uh, transpositions. Okay, so for the other way to prove um, that a n is the only index 2 subgroup of S n, we said we want to use the fact that a n is generated by three cycles. So, uh, well, let's suppose we have some uh, subgroup H of index 2 
and well let's let's we want to use the three cycles so let's look at the three cycles um, in H uh, we have clearly two possibilities either either H contains all the three cycles or it doesn't So, what happens if, if uh, H contains all the three cycles? Well, the three cycles generate a n. So, if A contains them all, it means that uh, uh, H has to contain a n. Now, H contains a n, and it is also a subgroup of index 2 just like a n. Therefore, h must be equal to a n. Now, the other possibility is that uh, h doesn't contain all three cycles. In other words, there exists some three cycles, some uh, cycle of length 3, a sigma, which is not in H. Well, then we look at the, so to speak, orbit of H under the action on the cosets. The orbit, sorry, of sigma. And we see that we have H, sigma of H, and sigma square, which is also equal to sigma inverse h, and these are three distinct cosets. Of h, and this is clearly absurd since h has index 2. 